Soon after the U.S. Census Bureau completes next year's count of New Mexico residents, state lawmakers will redraw the political boundaries for Congress, both houses of the state legislature, and the Public Regulation Commission. Now, the process has been problematic and rife with secrecy and political bickering. Rarely has the public engaged to a significant degree, and lawmakers are reluctant to yield any of their enormous power to an independent commission. Frequent NMIF contributor Gwyneth Dolan recently authored a report on the problem, and Gwyneth sat down this week with producer Matt Grubbs to talk about it. Gwyneth Dolan teaches at the University of New Mexico's Communications and Journalism Department. You are also a correspondent with us. We thank you for that. You're also an author. Um, tell us about this report on redistricting. Well, you know, uh, the census is coming up. It's every 10 years. It's going to take place early 2020. And one of the most important things that happens after the census is the redrawing of districts uh, for Congress and for the state legislature and a handful of other things based on the population change. It has a huge impact on regular people. It, it can either empower them to have um, a, a really strong connection with someone from their community who represents them, or it can distance them and effectively cut them off from the representation they're supposed to have. So what they do sounds fairly straightforward. They draw the boundaries of political districts. Um, the rub, at least what you found, is, is how they do it. Can, um, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, on one level it is simple. You just have to adjust the boundaries to make sure that the districts for the House have the same population. That's not so hard, right? Uh, but what happens is um, it ends up a real big tug of war between the people who already represent those districts. If they have to grow, you have to take a bite out of somebody else's. If they have to shrink, it might shrink and leave your house not in the district anymore that you represent. Um, there's a lot of partisanship involved. There's a lot of pressure to get a minority, a majority in Congress or in the state legislature. Um, the governor gets involved. Um, so it ends up being a pretty fierce battle, mostly behind the scenes. Okay. And for example, when you're drawing, um, say, our congressional districts, we have three of them, Albuquerque, North, South, basically. Um, if you were to take out a bunch of those southeastern New Mexico towns, and kind of shift them up if you could get enough. Um, on the western side of the state, you could theoretically end up with three solid Democratic districts as opposed to one that's somewhat competitive. You can basically draw anything. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. And, you know, um, during the 2000s, uh, Manny Aragon tried to do just that and uh, failed. But it was a big war at the time because he was determined to do that. And actually what he drew was the stripes of the of the Rio Grande Valley straight down the middle of the state. It was creative. Okay. <laughs> but not necessarily legal. This has a tendency to end up in court. Yes, it oh. does. And that's, you know, that's a big problem for everyone is that it's millions and millions of dollars after it's over and it hasn't been done right. People sue and they it, because it's discriminatory or because it's uh, unfair or whatever, um, and uh, it costs, it doubles the cost uh, of the redistricting. So that's a problem for a lot of people. Sure, and we want to show people what we're talking about. We have the cover of your report, which you produced with New Mexico In Depth and the Thornburg Foundation, um, and it shows Senate District 39, which is one of these big districts, and you chose to sort of illustrate how that looks um, and, and to describe the topic of gerrymandering. Yeah. <laughs> so we're looking at it right here. Ted, tell us about this district. Well, a lot of people, I, you know, I interviewed a lot of people for this report, and um, this was a big topic of conversation. District 39, you know, we last redistricted in 2011, was finished in 2012. This district changed a lot, um, and everybody said, well, you know, oh, what are you going to do? It's kind of a disaster, but, uh, oof, you know threw up their hands. So this has this is represented by Senator Liz Stefanix right now. It was Phil Griego's before that. Um, but you know what you've got there all the way up in San Miguel County, almost to Mora. This is the the southern side of uh, the city of Santa Fe. It comes down through Cerritos, all of Torrance County, this little nubbin of Bernalillo County at the throat, a ch little chunk of Valencia County, Lincoln County, shares very little in common with a lot of those voters. There's a lot of small communities here, right? These are small cities. It's not quite Santa Fe or Albuquerque, that southern side apart. 
but lumping Lincoln County onto it has been, it's been sort of gone back and forth with that, l often for political purposes. Okay. Um, the difficulty seems to be that uh, the public very often has no idea how we end up with a district that looks like a howling coyote. Um, there seems to be, um, I think back to 2011, um, there was this room at the Roundhouse where there were all these charts and graphs and um, a lot of information. Um, the problem, as I gather from your report, is one, what that information says, but two, nobody really goes into that room. Um, it's hard for people to access that information. 30 per, I, our president is about to be impeached and 30% of Americans don't know how they feel about that. <laughs> so expecting them to care about redistricting is a big ask, sure. right? But there are people who care. There are community organizations who are working on this. There are organizations who are trying to get communities engaged, people on the, on the ground level. It is hard, especially because most of the action here happens during a special session, usually in the fall. This will be 2021, probably. Okay. Um, nobody goes. The building is empty. There are all these maps in the conference room nobody ever goes in. But what happens is that they take their maps into the caucus, into these private closed-door meetings with just the Republicans and just the Democrats. No press is allowed to go in. No, no community groups. No. It's completely off the record. It's just a political meeting. They draw it all in there and come out and vote on it. And they can do that five minutes later. Okay. Well, pretty close. <laughs> so they, they have a lot of um, arguments amongst themselves. What ends up coming out is basically, okay, here's what your options are. Um, as we saw last time that went to court, you mentioned um, the time before that it went to court. Um, and it really does impact um, to the extent um, that we look at this politically, sort of whether Republicans or Democrats control a district. Um, there are also uh, um, racial or, or ethnic um, guidelines, and there are some rules. Um, what are the rules governing this, um, and what does New Mexico have relative to other states? Because not everybody does this the same way. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of states complain after redistricting that the politicians, they did unfair, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, the thing is, New Mexico has very few rules about how it's supposed to be done. Other states where they have had a bunch of lawsuits, where they've had a bunch of controversy, have changed the way they do re redistricting. Uh, a handful of them have gone to a commission structure, and there are several different ways to do that. Another option is to give the map drawing to nonpartisan staff. Our legislative council service, say, could do it. They draw the maps, and the lawmakers just vote yes or no. Okay. Um, in other cases, there are citizens on a commission. Sometimes, you know, you give the maps to the lawmakers and they can make small changes, things like that. Um, you can also put requirements into law uh, or into the guidelines that they put out before they do the redistricting. One of the most important things that came out in my report is that I talked to a professor, Justin Levitt, who studies redistricting at the national level. He's an expert on this. And he says, if you can't do a commission, which most people say is the gold standard, some flavor of commission, then one of the most important things you can do is to ban favoring a political party or a, a person, right? So you can not favor or disfavor a person or a party. An incumbent, when you say person? An incumbent or a candidate. Okay. And so that takes care of the incumbency issue and the partisanship issue to a, a large extent. Okay. Um, there's, he made a comment to you that you don't have to get it perfect to get it better. And I thought that was great because um, you've been up at the legislature a bunch for us and for other publications, and you see lawmakers say, well, it doesn't do this, so we should just scrap the whole thing. Um, is that a beneficial approach? Should we go for sort of this, this gold standard? Well, um, that's what folks like Common Cause and the League of Women Voters have been trying to do for a long th time. They've tried to push for a commission structure, but it's a really big change and lawmakers have been reluctant to do it. Um, so my report shows that there are many options between here and there, and you can make many incremental changes if you want to. Um, in between full commission and where we are now, which is basically Wild West. Okay. Um, the, um, the bounds that lawmakers have placed on themselves. Um, you said when we were discussing this before we went on air that, um, that they can uh, consider where an incumbent lives 
or they can say, well, you know what, if we draw it this way, we've got two senators in the same district and we can't have that. Um, basically, those are rules protecting themselves. Yes, and you know, a lot of people think of redistricting as this, as this big fight between Democrats and Republicans. That's one layer of it. But as we always say about the New Mexico legislature, it is a very congenial body. Uh, and so, yes, they do have these rules in place that have the effect of protecting them. And, um, you know, when the Senate passes their maps, the House generally says we're not going to mess with it. And the Senate doesn't mess with the House's maps. Uh, leadership really controls a lot of this and they work it out amongst themselves. Um, most of the fighting is, is behind the scenes. So each body is drawing its own boundaries, basically. Nobody on the House is looking at a Senate map and saying, hey, you know what, this kind of seems a little wonky to me, or vice versa. Well, they could. They could, <laughs> but they don't, because if they do, then they run the risk of running afoul of leadership. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, both a feature and a flaw of New Mexico state government. These are mostly really well-intentioned, nice, smart, hardworking people. They want to stay in office because they feel like they're doing the right thing. And they have they are in office because people voted for them and they have relationships with their constituents. So on one level, you can see where they're coming from. Why would we want to change this? It seems to be working just fine. But, you know, I think as journalists and members of the public, we need to take the long view. OK, Democrats have it now. Republicans have it in the future. Maybe, you know, we need to set rules that are going to be fair for everyone, no matter who's in office moving forward. Instead of sort of stacking the deck every 10 years. Um, the idea here is that constituents pick their representatives, right? Yes, that's the idea. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> what fair. happens? Um, everybody I talked to said the same thing. Legislators pick their constituents, not the other way around. You look at the map and you say, you know, if I have to move, if I have to pick up a precinct in order to add people to my district, well, which ones of, of these is going to work for me, you know? And then leadership looks at it and says, you know, this is a, an, a, an interesting tension. What's good for the party may not necessarily be good for you. It may be better for the party if they have, you know, more solid seats and yours is fairly competitive and maybe that doesn't work anymore. Sure. Um, we just have about a minute left here. Um, do you get a sense that there's a taste to reform any of this? No. Really? <laughs> I mean, I'm cynical. I've been covering the legislature 10 years. Um, it takes a long time for big changes to happen. And we've had a lot of issues um, that the public has been pretty engaged on that didn't move very quickly. The public supported an ethics commission. It took a really long time to do that. And there's very little public interest in redistricting. I think that will increase as the census comes along and people start thinking about it and talking about it. We are all so invested in what happens here, but uh, people don't really think about it. So um, I'm hopeful that the more we talk about it, the more we put information out there, the more people in communities can say, how does this benefit me? How am I, you know, um, being ignored here? What can we do to make this better? Gwyneth, thanks for coming in. We want to make sure that we'll link to the report and your blog post for New Mexico In Depth on our website so people can read more about it. Thank you. You bet.